Good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are and what time you're watching us. Welcome to the Urban Homesteading Channel with Professor DIY and Mrs. DIY. If this is the first time you're visiting our channel, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome. If you're a subscriber or if you've been here before, welcome back, we appreciate your support. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. So today we're going to tackle another uh, fun project. I don't know, it's something we don't do much. We've done it in the past a little bit, but it is not uh, normal in our wheelhouse. And that is a very good project for someone that is either thinking of getting into DIY work or are very, very new. And that is refinishing furniture that you bought secondhand. Right, Mrs. Yeah. DIY? Now, why this is a good beginner project is because you don't need a lot of tools, you do need some time, but you don't need to really build anything. So the, the opportunity for mistakes or a bad outcome is much less in QEs, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do today, we, we went and purchased a, a small dresser and uh, it is in pretty decent shape. We're going to go through it first and, and see, evaluate it if you wish, and then we're going to make it better fit our decor in our house. So if you want to learn how to refinish furniture or repurpose it, stick around and we're going to show you the whole process. So this is the piece of furniture we purchased and overall is in good shape, but we do not necessarily care for the, the finish, is that it? The finish, the style, yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is go over and look at it. And we're going to open the drawers. And there are things like this that we're going to remove. There is mm -hmm. no purpose for this, right? right? Well, not for us. Even for them, because they used this, but then they left it on the wood. So yep. this ate the wood, and now it is not even catching. Right. So it is worthless. Now, this is not like a, a $500 dresser, but we got it for only $30. Right. So it's worth that, right? And it is wood. Um, you know, it has the typical little um, thin drawer bottoms. It has a pretty typical, um, I'm not even sure what we're calling this. It's just a very thin type of uh, pulp wood, yeah. maybe. And, uh, and it's nailed on the back. It doesn't show, so it's not, you know, a, 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 um, a look that you have to worry about. It's just functional. Provides a back to the piece. It has this detail that I don't care for, but Miss DIY doesn't mind. I initially thought maybe we remove it. Uh, we might do something with it other than removing it. Okay. I, I don't care for it, but anyway. It makes it look like two pieces of furniture, one on top of the other. But right. um, it, yeah, it doesn't really have a, a design flair that I'm interested in. So we'll see. So we're going to start by removing this. And by removing the hardware, right? The, the, no, the don't, knobs. We don't like them. We want them a little more modern. Right. And definitely the finish itself is something that we want to change because this is not, you know, this is an old aesthetic. We don't mind pine. We don't mind natural. Uh, but this one is just too orange and we're going to see if we can do something better. Right. We don't like orange. All right. Let's get started. So as we said, we're starting by removing the hardware because we do not plan to use it. Or plastic wear as it is. Yeah, plastic hardware. And and we're going to remove all the knobs too. It's the same process. We just need to switch to a, a flat head screwdriver, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, are we going to put putty here or are you going to leave the holes? Um, you know, we'll see. So this is the easy part. Using a power tool makes this process easier, but it is not necessary, right? right? And right on, we came to something that you should not do. Someone has put glue in the little pools. Probably they did that because they, they came loose or something, right? This is not really a good idea. You shouldn't do it. Right. 
and there are you know there are screw holes like we showed you we had took the screws out the the knobs would not come off so we had to remove them with our handy dandy percussive persuasion Ta -da! <laughs> and uh, initially i thought which is very common that because they usually finish them after they put the knobs and they did as you see right. underneath is unfinished i thought that was what holding it right but in any case our, our percussive persuasion tool worked yep all right, so we're going to do the same in, on, on, on all of them. And then we're going to continue the process. So sometimes your percussive persuasive have to be more persuasive, right? Right. So if you have a difficulty getting it off, using, can you show us what you use? This is called the 511 tool, right? And it's usually for cooking and things of this nature, but we have found it very useful to persuade things, do yeah. what we want them to do, it right? It has a blade edge to it. It's right. not as sharp as a razor or anything, or a, a you know, utility knife, but it does have something that can kind of get into small crevices. And it works really good for situations like this. So what are you doing there, Mrs. DIY? I marked this drawer because it was on the very bottom of the dresser, and we wanted to maintain the the order in which they go into the dresser or where their location is originally we may be able to change it up a little bit if we want to but at least this way we know where they go and for well-made dressers they should all be the same size right but if it is not a very well-made dresser sometimes we've come across dressers that it's drawer was slightly different and will only fit on a specific spot right Definitely. now this is an interesting dresser because i found out it has nails here on the side which is something that uh, furniture makers stopped doing some time ago. So I find that intriguing, right? Right. We haven't found a maker's mark on this yet, so I'm no. not really sure, um, you know, how old it is or. But I find some little signs that might be handmade. Like this is not perfect. This is not machine for sure. Mm -hmm. And this is not perfect. So this might have been a handmade piece. Also, the way it is painted. You see the the runs there. Yeah. So this actually may be a hand-paid piece. So the drawers are all out and we have removed all the door knobs. So the next step now will be for us to clean the inside. Again, this was a, a used uh, piece of uh, uh, furniture that we are going to repurpose for our son's room, right? Right. So you can clean it. I mean, we prefer to clean it, but I guess that's not the necessary step. Well, I think for most people, it's pretty necessary if you pick up a second-hand piece of furniture. Right. Now, Mrs. Uh, DIY is using a, an old uh, cloth, uh, washcloth, I guess is what it is, right? Yep. But you can use like um, those uh, one usage, uh, uh, what do you call them, wipes? Yeah, yep wipes that have some sort of chemical to clean with. What are you using to clean? No chemicals? Water right now. Okay. Um, you know, I, I like to use vinegar water for things like this, but I don't think it's really necessary since this is plastic. Okay. So with our drawers cleaned, we're ready to start sanding. And this is the process that will show us, in essence, how hard this remake will be right yes the, the first sanding piece is the most critical sanding piece so let's sand it and see let's start sanding and let's see how it works you can also use chemicals for this and if this is hard we might actually move to a chemical solution we'll see sanding is more labor intensive and takes much longer than using a chemical stripper but we've decided not to use chemical strippers in our processes Additionally, sanding let us see the wood grain the best way while the chemical agent might change a little bit how the, the wood looks until it completely dries. So here as we're sanding we start seeing what type of wood we have, what condition the wood is, what grain the wood has and that of course will become pivotal in us deciding exactly how we're going to finish the piece. As you can see as the old finish is uh, sanded away we can start see a very, very nice wood grain underneath it. So we start leaning here towards 
actually staining the piece versus painting it. And the more we are actually sanding, the more we think that staining is the way to go for this specific piece. However, that is an individual decision and you can decide, you can see here how beautiful the grain looks, really nice, much better than I thought it would be. And definitely on the side, I mean look at that, clearly that is three pieces of wood that it is joined together. As we said, this was not a very expensive piece of furniture even when it was new, but still you could not purchase it for the amount of money we spent both buying the, the piece and also buying the hardware that we changed. So, Sanding is a very important step. I usually do not uh, like it, but in this case it's necessary. So we have a little bit of damage on this corner we are going to actually try to fix. And we're going to start by using some painter's tape and reforming this corner. Right, Mrs. Wizard? Yep. You're not Mrs. Wizard anymore. You're not Mrs. Wizard anymore. You're Mrs. DIY, I'm sorry. Okay, so all we have to do is just come on top and create a skin that we want the lines to meet here. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So we want to recreate a normal corner. Don't, don't fold over because we need to put uh, wood body underneath. We're making a pocket, huh? So from the other side here, you see we've formed with the tape a little bit of a protuberance, right? Protuberance. Protuberance. And now we're going to fill all this with wood putty. A better product will be a product like a, it's called um, liquid wood that dries a little harder than putty, but putty should be okay. This is a small damage, so we're not going to to worry too much. Since we're going to try and uh, have a different color of that uh, little detail, you can remove it and we might remove it at a later time, but for now we decided to keep it. So what we're going to do is mask it, right? Yep. So take your time with the masking, your time, your time with the masking process and mask all the way around, right? Yes. Sorry, this is not the best type. This is dollar store type. They will run out of our good tape. Don't use dollar store tape. But this is what we have right now. They don't do what we're doing. Well, that's what we have right <laughs> now. <laughs> Just sounds funny. Okay, we're doing this, but don't. Right, buy real tape. Certain things are not good from the dollar store. And the idea is to make this pop, right? Feature. Make it a little more modern, is that the concept? Well, maybe. Savings tip. When you find a stain or paint for sale and it is a color you like, it's a good idea to buy it. Like this was in um, $3, $4 cheaper than normal, from $12 to $8, right? Mm -hmm. So, even though we didn't get the project for this, we purchased it because we knew we liked it. We've used it before, right? Yeah. And we knew we liked it. So this is the stain we're going to use, similar to the stain we use in other projects. Of course, at this stage, you could also just put a poly over it and leave it this uh, natural color if you so choose. It has a nice, very light yellow color. This is really nice wood overall, and it has those details that we really like. Uh, I cannot believe I'm going to say that, but of course you can also paint it if you so choose. I do not like to paint wood unless there is no other option or there is a specific reason to paint it, like protect it. I've painted bathroom things as you probably know. But overall, this is your decision point of how you want your final product to look. You can stain it, you can paint it, you can poly it and just leave it as it is. So we're about ready to start the staining process and by we I mean Mrs. DIY. And again, this is a step of a uh, matter of a personal taste. Yep. It makes no real difference. Here goes. There goes nothing. That looks to be staining pretty nicely. Yeah. Thank you. 
because it's so dark. I do love how this is looking. Hmm? Yep. Me too. The transformation of every piece we've ever made is amazing, isn't it? Every time we put a little bit of stain, it just change, it makes it a different piece. So our repair is looking pretty good. I don't know why I said it's repair. Um, it has not dry yet, so we need to let it dry, and then we'll sand it. But as you can see, it has a, a nice form other than needing to be sanded, right? And, and it has felt ni filled up nicely. So as you recall, we removed the original buttons and here they are, we, we did not reuse them. We decided to replace them with more modern metal buttons that would better fit the vision we have for the piece. Yeah, but they're not buttons, they're poles. Button poles. Button poles? Pull buttons? No. No? What are you doing there? Oh, this is an, an unopening. Unboxing? What is it called? Uh, not an unopening. <laughs> an opening, not an unopening. We have screws and we have drawer pulls. Door pulls. And we're going to use two different types because they had, um, the original had two different sizes, as you can see, right? Two different sizes. So yep. we, we're having two different types to make it even more unique. Ta da! Deal with that. As you can see, the most modern, the more modern metal pool totally changed the feel of the cabinet right of the drawer of the drawer mm -hmm. it brings it much more to the modern era from out of the 60s and 70s well and this is our finished product what do you think mrs diy i really like it i think that the, the brush nickel really pops against the Yep. Well, friends, and this is our finished product for today. We took a, a rather beat up, nicely constructed, actually, uh, small dresser, and we modernized it more appropriate for use on the bedroom of a young man, right? Right. Or before it looked like a, an old woman's dresser. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Okay, or an old man's dresser. Or an old man's, yes. We don't want to be uh, gender biased in, in our channel. Well, what was the cost, Mrs. Wizard? Well, we paid $30 for the second-hand dresser. Right. Um, we spent about 20 well, close to $30 on the hardware. Which is optional, of course, right? Right. And, of course, you could get cheaper. I mean, it's, if he had more time on Amazon, you could source them cheaper. We bought them, in essence, the most expensive place you could buy pools, drawer pools. And that was the, the big uh, square store, the blue one, right? Yep. So you're doing still around 50 to 60 dollars, right? Yep. I don't think you can buy it for 50 or 60 dollars. What are your thoughts? No, probably not. Um, not in this condition. And again, you can remove this. We chose to leave it as a... Accent. As an accent, but you can easily remove it. It was only attached with three, three nails per piece, it looked like, right? Mm -hmm. So if you wanted a cleaner, more, um, more even more modern look, you could definitely do that. And we changed the orientation from where it was to start with, right? Right. It was down. It was, yeah, I don't know. It was in a weird spot, like it was the third drawer down and it just didn't look right there. Um, so I guess you could say if it was in the middle, it was balanced, but it didn't look right. Okay, excellent. Well, anything that we learned, let us learn from this build. Lots of sanding. Lots of sanding. Yes, definitely. You need to, um, it works out your muscles, that's for sure. You use power sanders yeah. with muscles. So don't let the style of something that you can repurpose dictate A, how you're going to use it, and B, what the finished look will be. Right. We bought this for the function. We needed a dresser, right? Mm -hmm. And we knew we couldn't build a dresser for $30 with the prices of lumber these days. Right. So this is less than what we have spent to buy it, and it's exactly what we wanted. Versus if we bought something in the store, you always make compromises, right? 
Definitely. And anything you buy, this, you know, if you buy a dresser in the store these days, it's, you know, pulp wood. It's, it's not real wood. It's uh, laminated stuff. This is real wood. And it is all wood. Everything. The drawers all are wood. wood. Yep. There is no particle board anywhere. There is a plastic, uh, what do you call that? Liner. A liner, mm -hmm. which uh, Mrs. Wizard might decide to move it later. I don't know if she will or not. Yeah. But put something nicer in there. But that has nothing to do with the construction. The previous nope. owner put that there. So right. The construction is still all wood. I like the detail we decided to put on it. I mean, you could finish it with any type of stain or even paint. I've seen a lot of um, makeovers where it's kind of rainbow colors and... And this was really borderline. This was a piece that I could be convinced to paint, right? It was not the, mm -hmm. the greatest quality piece in the world, but still it was nice enough that I think the state makes it look better. Yeah, the wood was in really good shape. And it wasn't that hard because there was only one layer of um, varnish on it. Right, and again, you could make it easier on you by using chemical strippers. We prefer to actually sand them versus strip it, right? Yep. But again, it's a personal, a personal choice. Well, folks, this is it for today. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, we would appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Say or like, subscribe. Let us know what else you might want to watch in future episodes of the Urban Homesteading Channel. From Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and the Urban Homesteading Channel, take care, friends. We'll see you next week.